So I'd just like to present to you a quick demonstration on how to perform the paper chromatography. So we're performing the, the chromatography in these tanks, all right? Now, the paper you're using, you need to be wearing gloves because do you have sugars on your hands? You've got sugars, amino acids, oils, you know, various enzymes on your, the oils on your skins. So you don't want to test the sugars that are on your hands, the sugars that are in the, the, the residues on your hands. So make sure when you deal with the chromatography paper, you're using tweezers and you've got your gloves on so that you're not going to have fingerprints all over your paper. You don't want to stain for fingerprints. All right, We're not doing forensics here. So this is the, the paper. Draw your, your pencil line and spot at regular intervals. Okay? I'll also point out that we're using um, a P20 with one of the yellow tips to spot your, your solutions onto the, the paper. But don't apply your spot in one application. Apply repeated applications of small volumes and let the spot sort of um, be absorbed into the paper before you add another spot to the same position. And that way it just runs much better on the gel. Okay. Once it's spotted and dried, you'll then roll it up and staple it together. I don't know if we help you with this. And then this will be placed in the jar here. Okay. So the solvent's there. This sits in there. Now, clearly, the solvent will... This will sit in the solvent but the spots will be above the solvent, okay? The paper sits in the solution, but the spots are above the solution. And the solution is drawn up through the paper by capillary action, and it will dissolve and take up the sugars with it. So the different sugars will run different distances up the chromatography sheet. And then by the distance the sugar runs, you can measure that RF position, you know, you, you measure how far the solvents run, and and how far your sugars run, you get a ratio, and then you can compare that and measure that and use that to identify your, your sugars, okay? So it's a fairly standard procedure. We'll help you with this procedure. So we'll do the staining for you so that you can colorize your spots so that you can look at them because you, they're gonna run, but they're not visible. So you need to make them visible by silver nitrate. So here we have a typical example showing the stained sugar and you can see that the different sugars are running in different positions relative to the solvent and therefore you can calculate the RF value for each sugar.